Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. When Jesus was 12 years old, his family traveled to Passover along with many other families, as they always had before. When the celebration was over, Mary and Joseph started to return home. Joseph, do you know where Jesus is? He was with my cousin's family last time I saw him. After traveling all day, Mary and Joseph realized Jesus wasn't with any of their friends or relatives. They were very worried and started back to Jerusalem, looking for him all along the way. Where is my son? By the time they got back to Jerusalem, it was nighttime, too late to look for Jesus. The next day, they searched all around the big city. I'm looking for a boy about this tall. But couldn't find Jesus anywhere. Another night came without any sign of him. On the third day of their search, Mary and Joseph were walking past the temple, a place where God's people went to worship. Coming from inside the temple, they heard a familiar voice. They rushed inside, and there was young Jesus talking with some teachers, just like he was one of them. He asked them questions. He answered theirs. His mother had a question, too. Son, why did you stay behind? We were worried about you. Oh, you should have known. I must be where my father's work is. <clears throat> we pray the video provided insight into our lesson, Jesus in the Temple. According to God's law, every male was required to go to Jerusalem three times a year for the great festivals, according to Deuteronomy 16, 16. In the spring, the Passover was celebrated, followed immediately by the week-long festival of unleavened bread. Passover commemorated the night of the Jews' escape from Egypt when God had killed the Egyptian firstborn, but had passed over Israelite homes, according to Exodus 12, 21 through 36. Passover was the most important of the three annual festivals. At the age of 12, Jesus was considered almost an adult. So he probably didn't spend a lot of time with his parents during the festival. Those who attended these festivals often traveled in caravans for protection from robbers along the Palestine roads. The women and children usually would travel at the front of the caravan with the men bringing up the rear. A 12 year old boy conceivably could have been in either group. So both Mary and Joseph probably assumed that Jesus was with the other one. But when the caravan left Jerusalem, Jesus stayed behind, absorbed in his discussion with the religious leaders. The temple courts were famous throughout Judea as a place of learning. The Apostle Paul studied in Jerusalem, 
At the time of the Passover, the greatest rabbis of the land would assemble to teach and to discuss great truths among themselves. The coming Messiah would no doubt have been a popular discussion topic, for everyone was expecting him soon. Jesus would have been eager to listen and to ask probing questions. It was not his youth, but the depth of his wisdom that astounded these teachers. Mary had to let go of her child and let him become a man, God's son, the Messiah. Fearful that she hadn't been careful enough with this God-given child, she searched frantically for him. But she was looking for a boy, not the young man who was in the temple, astounding the religious leaders with his questions. Letting go of people or projects we have nurtured can be very difficult. It is both sweet and painful to see our children growing into adults, our students into teachers, our subordinates into managers, our inspirations into institutions. But when the time comes, we must step back and let go. In spite of the hurt, then our prodigies can exercise their wings, take flight, and soar to the heights God intended for them. This is the first mention of Jesus's awareness that he was God's son. But even though he knew his real father, Jesus did not reject his earthly parents. He went back to Nazareth with them and lived under their authority for another 18 years. God's people do not despise human relationships or family responsibilities. If the Son of God obeyed his human parents, how much more should we honor our family members? Don't use commitment to God's work to justify neglecting your family. Jesus' parents didn't understand what he meant about his father's house. They did not realize he was making a distinction between his earthly father and his heavenly father. Jesus knew that he had a unique relationship with God. Although Mary and Joseph knew he was God's son, they did not understand what his mission would involve. Besides, they had to raise him along with his brothers and sisters. Matthew 13, 55 and 56, as a normal child, they knew he was unique, but they did not know what was going on in his mind. The Bible does not record any events of the next 18 years of Jesus's life, but Jesus undoubtedly was learning and maturing. As the oldest in a large family, he undoubtedly assisted Joseph in his carpentry work. Joseph may have died during this time, leaving Jesus to provide for the family. The normal routines of daily life gave Jesus a solid understanding of the Judean people. The second chapter of Luke shows us that although Jesus was unique, he had a normal childhood and adolescence. In terms of development, he went through the same progression we do. He grew physically and mentally. He related to other people and he was loved by God. A full human life is balanced. Thus, it was important to Jesus, and it should be important to all believers to develop fully and harmoniously in each of these key areas, physical, mental, social, and spiritual.